Welcome back to Project Film 2024. Today, let me introduce you to the way the questions are framed. Because unlike many other competitive examinations, UPSC have different types of questions for your prelims. So, let's check the types of questions and the way they are framed. So, we are showing you the questions from last year's, that is the 2023 UPSC Civil Service prelims. So, here we go. competitive examination, UPC also gives you simple elimination kind of questions. So, this question you could see, they are given you four countries and the question is why they are in news. So, this question comes from the current affairs uh, section and uh, it pertains to the international relations. So, you have four options. Why these countries are in news and the options if you see, discovery of uh, rich deposits, Establishment of Chinese military base, southward expansion of Sahara Desert or successful coup. The answer is D here because all these countries saw the successful military establishment coming into power in recent years. So, that's the answer. Now, let me remind you, just because this is a simple elimination type of question, doesn't automatically mean that these are easy questions. They could ask you some real hard facts. And if you don't know the, you know, exact answer, you may sometimes find it really, really difficult to eliminate this question. Sometimes you may be able to eliminate two questions, I mean two options, but uh, still it will be, you know, difficult to eliminate the remaining two. So, simple elimination type of question automatically doesn't mean that they will be easy. But, you know, comparatively you need lesser time to process this question. It will be easy to read and uh, comprehend. And if you don't know the answer, you will be able to skip the question and go to the next one also faster. So, these are some of the questions and uh, I would say out of the 100 questions now like uh, maybe around 20 questions are like this. But of course, the numbers can vary. So, this is your first type and most of the other competitive examination you will find most of the questions in this format. Okay, now let me move on to another type. <clears throat> this type of question, particularly you see them in the UPSC prelims, and earlier this kind of questions were called as assertion and reason. Here what happens is, they will give you two statements, and this will be the four options. always will be like this. Like you have two statements here and the option A states that both these statements are correct and the statement 2 is the exact explanation of statement 1. So, with the example, let us go into that uh, part. So, both the statements will be, should be correct here and the second statement should be an exact or the reason behind the statement 1. That is your option A. Now, the option B states that both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. Here, what you have to understand is both the statements are correct if you read them independently but the second statement is not an explanation of the first statement. That is the option B. Now, we have statement, sorry, option C. Here, the first statement is correct, but the second statement is incorrect. And the last option, option D states that statement 1 is incorrect, but statement 2 is correct. So, these are your four given here, let us go about how to solve this. First and foremost, if you get such a question, you read the first statement. So, mind you, to answer this question, your factual knowledge, particularly your basics has to be strong. Otherwise, you will find it very difficult. In whichever uh, portions they ask you, that factual knowledge, that basic knowledge has to be accurate. So, you read the first statement. So, you read it 
and if you find it correct okay so first statement is correct you know that that means option b you already eliminate because option b says that statement 1 is incorrect so here if statement 1 is correct then option b is out so you have three more options now you read the statement that the statement 2 is not correct then you've got your answer because 1 is correct and 2 is incorrect so your option should be statement uh, sorry option C now is the most difficult part if you know that the both the statements are correct then you have you are left with the other two options so both statements are correct but whether the second statement is the explanation of first statement. That's what you want to check. So, many people, many of my students actually find it very difficult. They told me. So, what I will suggest is, you read both these statements. I mean, once you are sure that both these statements are correct, you read them as one statement, just adding a because in between the two. That's your way of doing it. Now, let's look into the actual question here. 7th August is declared as the National Handloom Day. This is a reason happening. So, if you follow your current affairs, you know that this is correct. Now, the second statement. It was in 1905 that the Sudeshi movement was launched on the same day. So, the second statement states about the Sudeshi movement and 7th August 1905, you know, was uh, the day when this movement was launched. So, if you know your history, you know that the second statement is also correct. So, now you put the because and read them together. 7th August is declared as the National Handroom Day because it was in 1905 on this day the Sudeshi movement was launched. It makes perfect sense. So, your answer is A. Because the second statement is the perfect explanation of the first statement. So, first part is from the current affairs and the second part is from your history. So, if your facts are strong, you could arrive at the answer. So, before I move on, let me just remind you once more that the present pattern of uh, UPSC prelims emphasize a lot on your understanding of the basics. Because most of the questions you have to I mean, you can't use the other kind of elimination technique, but you have to rely on your strength in the basics. So, this is the type of question. So, if your basics are strong, this is actually an easy question and this is how you solve it. So, it may be difficult, it may be easy. Most of the time, I find that this uh, type of statement questions are comparatively easy because they are, you know, checking the basic facts and most of the facts are not too difficult. So, if you revise properly, these kinds of questions can be really scoring for you. Let's move on to another type. <coughs> Here, you have two statements. And which of the statements are correct? Or sometimes they could ask which of the statements are incorrect. So, two statements. There is no, nothing like connection or anything like the previous type. So, two statements and the options are only one is correct. I mean, sorry, first one only is correct. And option B is two only is correct. Option C is both the statements are correct. And option D is neither one nor two. So, here you read both these statements and then decide the correctness. In this particular one, the Biodiversity Management Committees are key to the realization of the objectives of the Nagoya Protocol. That's the correct statement. And the second one, again about the Biodiversity Management Committee, they have important functions in determining access and benefit sharing, including the power to levy collection fees on the access of biological resources within its jurisdiction. So, this uh, Biodiversity Management Committees are an important component in your environmental segment 
and in the environmental segment, the Indian legislation and uh, organizations directly connected with environment is a major area. So, if you have revised that part, you might have studied about these two and you can see that both their statements are correct. So, your option is both 1 and 2. So, here actually it is a little bit easier than the previous one. Because you just need to check whether both these statements are right or wrong. That explanation part is not added. So, these kinds of questions are quite common in uh, UPSC's prelim examination. And again, your basic understandings become very, very important. Now, let us move on to another type. Last year, most of the people find it very difficult because all of a sudden UPSC have introduced a new pattern. In fact, more than half of the questions in the last year's question paper that is the prelim 2023 was like this. Here what happens is they give you like uh, three, four statements. That could be something like this, uh, you know, match the following type of uh, one. Here you could see the awards and the explanation part. And uh, sometimes it could be a full sentence as well. But mostly there will be three to four options. Four options are common. Now, the look at the question there. How many pairs are correctly matched? Or it could be how many sentences above are correct? So, here you have to do one more step. That is, you check each statement, then you determine whether they are right or wrong, then you count. So, there is, in the previous question, like uh, 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2, neither 1 and 2, that question, you just do the right or wrong part and arrive at the answer. But here, you do the right or wrong independently and then count. So, for this particular question, Nandan Janchan held Ratna Award for the most spectacular and outstanding performance. That is a correct explanation for that particular award. Second one, Arjuna Award for the lifetime achievement by a sports person. Arjuna Award is not for lifetime achievement. It is given every year for, you know, performance in different disciplines. So, the second sta first statement is right, second statement is wrong, third one, Dronachari award to honor eminent coaches. That again is correct. And the fourth one, Dastriya Khel Protsahan Puraska to recognize the contribution made by sports person. That one is not correct because this is an award given to the corporate for promoting sports. So, I would say that this is definitely a Difficult question because this is more on the GK. From the world of sports nowadays they started asking a lot of questions. So this was one such question. If you know, I mean your uh, actual general knowledge about these things are good, you can actually crack this. This Khel Protsahan Puraskar, Protsahan means encouragement. So <coughs> you could assume that it is by an outside thing rather than a sports person this award is being given. And Dronacharya and coaches, that connection is easily made. Khel Ratna Award is the most spectacular, most uh, highest award for sport persons in India. That is also something. And Arjuna Award, since it is given every day, and if you are a regular reader of newspaper, you can also say that it is not for lifetime achievement. So, if you remind your pool, you could still come to the answer, but mind you, this type of question, as I told you, you have to independently determine each question plus you have to count how many of them are correct. So, a little bit extra time. And last year, I think 53 questions were on this format and many people find it really, really difficult to crack it. Not because of the toughness of the questions, but just because of the changed format. So, this was from the last year. So, I would say that uh, this is uh, the pattern which we saw last year. But for 
for your people, they could come up with something new. So, from there, I mean, in the exam hall, if you find any surprises, just read them calmly and allocate your uh, time adequately to crack that one. And if you didn't get absolutely any idea, skip it and move on. So, how to go about that, uh, you know, in the exam hall, how to do that uh, rounds and uh, about the presence of mind and other kind of thing, I will do a separate video. Now, in the next episode, let me cover some areas where, uh, you know, the actual conduct matters. So, you get the prelims from different areas, you get questions. And in the next episodes onwards, I will be covering different areas based on the previous questions. Thank you for watching.